coming here for many years, and I remember before this was built, right? Where was it we used to meet? In the Grange, yeah. You know, as you get older, you lose some of the memories, but you remember, generally speaking. So um, many years, I don't remember that first year. I came with Fred Miller, 1983. 1982, I was converted. <laughs> Brought out of the dark into the light. Hi, Andrew. And um, you know, it's amazing how God works and to see how this church has grown. It's, it's really um, great, you know. I'm going to pray so God will lead me. Our Father and God, thank you for this congregation that meets here, for these saints, for these children, that they are also present. Bless God and continue to have your way with us. We are so thankful to you for blessing our lives, that we've come to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and that we have a living hope. So thank you, God, for redeeming us through your Son. Thank you, Jesus, Almighty God, for being here tonight. Father and Son and Spirit, you are one God. We love you and we thank you. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. So, that city there, right there, that bridge there is where the guy came, Islamic guy, and killed a few people. He had a few knives in his backpack. Uh, things have happened since then. They buy a van and drive it down where people are eating and, and having a good evening. They, they've got an agenda, and you never know when they'll raise their head. But God did tell us that in the last days, there will be all kinds of things taking place. Now, we don't know when Jesus is coming, but it's kind of warming up to that. So we leave that where that's at. But uh, this is a, a great city. Someday, some of you may come and visit us. And you can see everything. It's all around here. You don't have to go too far. You might want to go to Scotland or whatever, and Wales, and on a, on, a, on a coach trip and have a bed and breakfast that night and then go around and see things. It's great. It's the way to do it. But London has got so much to see. It's amazing. It used to be a Christian country. Now it's mostly nominally Christian. But at least they still believe in Christ. And I think God has got his hand on us as yet. The next prime minister is not a believer. He might believe in some greater power. The last one was, they took Theresa May out. But she said, all my political decisions are based on the fact that I go to church on Sunday and I believe in Jesus Christ. But they never supported the leadership. We must support our leadership, whether it's in the church or in the workplace or in, in politics. You know, Mr. Trump has had a hard time over it, but he's done a great, great job. And now we got a guy coming up just like him. Big man, blonde hair, and Trump likes him too. So between the two of them, I hope they work it out for England because we're trying to get out of Europe. We have so many uh, Eastern Europeans in Europe. We have many, many, many Africans in Europe. And the Africans are the ones that are carrying it. They've been taught by British missionaries in the 1920s, and they've now come over because they were once a colony. So they have churches everywhere. But these churches are basically uh, a little short of the whole gospel. They teach you that if you accept Jesus, you're okay now. And if you pray the prayer, he's going to come live with you. You're born again. You're new creation, you know. Get baptized and find a church. So at least they're talking about Jesus because the Islamic people are everywhere. They're everywhere. Okay, let's move. Before I go, look, we've had to incorporate as a charity because we wanted to register the church so that we'd get tax breaks. But we need to register the church in England, the Church of Christ, you know. Never was registered. Brother Fred came and he said, Alan, one day you do it. So the day has come, you know. And that was 1977 when he started the first services in his home. He left around 85, 86. So we are incorporated as a charity, and actually we're called the Church of Christ London, Matthew 16, 18. We've had to nominate trustees. 
new forwarding agent, which is my son, because my original forwarding agents have retired. Uh, Arita's blind and Bob is heading up towards 90. And they've been a tremendous blessing for over 30 years. It's amazing how time flies. And they looked after Jacob when he went to Bible college, so he didn't have a, uh, you know, a debt to pay for housing and all that stuff. And we got a dedicated bank account, so all the funds that are coming, three years ago we hit this one hard. And we put it out in the newsletters because we were given notice to quit. They're demolishing the old Church of England, which has been there for 140 years. And the fellowship hall that we've been using for 28, 30 years almost is being demolished because the church closed its doors. The two fellowship halls are being knocked down to build 13 apartments so the Church of England will have some money coming in. So we were told, you're going to move. Find somewhere. We couldn't find any place. So when we started the building fund and we talked about it in my newsletters and I made trips like this to try to raise awareness for us to have a building, nothing built in England for 75 to 100 years for, our, for the Lord's church, okay? There used to be churches of Christ, but they've all gone. So try to not lose my train of thought here. And a dedicated bank account so that we know where all the funds are going when they come from the United States. We have the original account that Fred had, the Streatham Church of Christ, London Mission, Streatham Church of Christ. We still have that account. So between these two accounts, we're getting close to $300,000. We need 400, no, 300,000 pounds. That's $400,000. So we're getting close to that. And for that, we won't even get a quarter of an acre. But in England, you can park in the streets. So if we get that, we'll put a building on it. People are not worried about where they park. We just want our own place. These are the men, some of the men. He's good up here. He can preach. Needs a little encouragement yet. He's got a wife and three kids. She's a nurse. Can't always get to church because she, she's, you know, they make you work Sundays and 12-hour shifts. Anyway. This is Ed. He used to be a heavy, heavy-duty Catholic. He's one of our really good teachers. Solid man. He, he comes on a train with his wife one and a half hours one way to come to the assembly on the Lord's Day. And he is so good. Praise God for him. Ed Alvia. He used to be a gang leader. Not a gang leader, but he was in gangs and stuff in the Philippines once. This man is... I, I'm, we're praying for him to come back from Australia. He's a good preacher. He knows the scriptures very well. This is a Pakistani man I got asylum for with his family. They're now residents in the UK. God did that. I was just an instrument. I just made a couple of calls, and they connected with people you can never get to in an immigration home office, you know. And they asked me for his number and for his wife's number. Through that family, we now have five more Pakistani families coming to church. But we have to nurture them because they don't really know the Scripture. But they know that there's a God and Jesus and the Virgin Mary and all of that stuff because they're usually coming out of a Catholicism type of thing. So, that's Wilson Iqbal. He's a London bus driver. He's got two boys. I'll show you his sons. Their mother died when they were both five and six years old. And she said at the family devotion, you know, Nobu, that's his name. If the Lord took me tonight, I wouldn't mind because he's blessed us so well. We got everything we need. We got a home, we got kids, you know. Well, she, was, she, she left that night. The Lord took her that night. But the family has remained faithful, you know, amazing. So that's noble. That's the one with, you know. And there's a couple of ladies got their eye on him. So which is a good thing. Because, you know, <laughs> I was a single parent for five years. After being a Christian for two and a half years, my wife left us. I brought the two kids up. Jasmine and Jacob. Jacob is 41, Jasmine's 49. And Fred Miller, who started the work, came over one Sunday morning at the same place that he used to preach at. And he was, we started another work. He said, Alan, I don't know how to tell you this, but you've been a faithful man. He says, five years, not good for a man to be alone. He said, why don't you go to that church we're working on and invite one of them single ladies to dinner or lunch or something. Well, that's how it started. That's how I met that wife I just showed you. And Isaac, I got a good son there, and my daughter Hannah, she'll be 24 in August. And all these guys are active in the church. They've got to bring lessons. There's a youth Sunday once a month. 
Okay, um, that's the, he's one of the three elders that I ordained 13 years ago. We started the work. Too much to tell. This guy, he had his own construction company with his wife, Rochi, in the Philippines. She came over to design Glasgow Airport in Scotland. Great job. She told him, give our business to your brothers. They can run it. You come to England. Everything is great. He got on the plane and came. In the meantime, she was laid off. No job. He was washing dishes in a pancake house. Devil was attacking the family. Long story short, today they have tremendous jobs in a big construction company, husband and wife. They bought their own home. They have a nice car. And he's on fire for the Lord. He's always looking for somebody to have a Bible study with. This Pakistani man brought this Pakistani man. He's a cancer survivor just recently, about a year now. He's a bus driver, London bus driver, so is he. Big red buses. We got three in our congregation. These are our young people. There's more, but I'm showing you what we've got for this display, for this presentation. Uh, Mark will probably, well, I believe Mark and my daughter Hannah, Mark and Hannah, are getting married, not this December, but the coming December. And it'll be in the Philippines, because my wife's people are from there, and his family is from there. But we got a good break, because the family are already in the wedding business, so they do everything, and it'll be for free. That's good. That's great. This is the guy Noble, I, I should say Ray and his brother Ron, their dad was the chap down here, the bus driver, lost their wife, their mother when they were five and four years old, but they've remained faithful. Mark and Matthew, these are brothers. He's the younger brother. He's already married. His wife is, is in England now. Ray is the youngest, I think. Is he younger than you? No, he's older than you, right. Isaac is the youngest in the preaching class. He's 18. This guy is the next one up, Ryle. He preached three weeks ago at the, at the Bible study hour. Once a month, it's the youth Sunday. The Bible study hour is taken by the, one of these guys, and the preaching is done by one of these. So three weeks ago, he was the preacher. He's now 30, and he brought the exhortation. This guy is studying to be a lawyer. He's studying nursing. He's got a job, my wife got him in her company, and he's on the up and up. They're really doing well. It's, it's advertising, digital advertising. The company's called Genix Imaging. And there's my son Isaac with his shirt and tie and stuff on. Look pretty good there. He'll make a preacher, I think, one day. I hope so. I hope so. He got a lesson when he goes back. He's going to present a lesson. <laughs> he brought his iPad, his, his laptop with him. Heavy. I said, what did you bring that for? He said, I got a lesson when I get back, Dad. It's okay. Great. That's our family camp. That's just church people and a few friends. That was last year. A lot of good guys there. She was baptized. A couple of others. Anyway, that's just a group of us. This year we will have half as much again. We've had to book two, uh, two, sh uh, two lodges because we use a lodge with the dorms in there and everything in one place. But we got more people coming this year. So, you know, the church is really growing now because uh, there was a time, listen, let me tell you, there was a time there was only five of us in there, Just We had to discipline somebody because they were not behaving, basically. Young guy. But, well, then I was young. That was 20, 30 years ago. And this guy had taken too much LSD and things, and he couldn't, he used to make some, he had some funny tics, you know. He asked me if I'd help him. I said, yeah, you've got to stop making them innuendos about the women and commandeering the kitchen and stuff, you know, whatever. So we disfellowshipped him. That's too long a story to tell. So we lost about 12 people. The church was just growing. Fred had just left to come back to America. But today we're about 70 from five. They don't always all come. On the first Sunday, potluck and youth Sunday, that's when everybody comes. Yeah. Well, you know, people are working stuff, Antonio. You don't know who's going to be there, who's not going to be there, man, you know. But it's growing. Thank God for that. This is a ministry in Russia I go to in the fall and the spring. I go every year and help these little guys. We help uh, orphans that are aging out at 16. 
We got contacts who know all of these. We don't just go in there blind. Been going there for many years. Went to help Stuart Merrill a 20, almost 25 years ago. And ever since then, we've been going slowly. And this is the first house church, which is a result of our going there. Because the Russians don't know what it is to be truly born again. They believe if you repent, you're okay. This guy here is a foremost tumor specialist in Belarus. We baptized him just recently. We helped him to go to seminars to Switzerland or Israel. And many years ago, he said, our, our understanding about this is in the 50s. He said, I haven't got any books, you know. So we got him books, eventually sent him to, we got him a microscope and all that stuff. He's number two in Europe with an Israeli guy. They tied for first place. But the guy's a Christian, and he's there. He's committed. So there's good things happening in Belarus. That's the only reason I go, because I want to help to sh show people how to get into the kingdom. And there's so many people there that don't know how, but they love God. They love Jesus, but they don't know how to embrace that completely, you know. This is my busking ministry. This is a quiet time at the station, I can assure you. That there's a platform that goes right into London. That train keeps coming. People pour out of there. Here, and just to the left a little, uh, is, a, is a tunnel that goes to about eight platforms. So you can imagine how many people are coming and going. That's an escalator up there. And up there's a coffee bar. And this balcony goes all the way around to my left and people are watching me from up there so they're hearing the word and now a year ago they put in a coffee bar which is about from here to the back of the wall that's how far they are from me and there's tables out there and chairs and they come to take their coffee or whatever so they like sit down audience so i can talk about god they're getting it whether they like it or not but most of the time they like it because i don't use too much rock and rolly stuff I slow it down. When you slow it down, like, holy, holy, you know that song? Yeah, people think. But you can play, bah, 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 you know, they're not thinking the same. So anyhow, that's where I'm at. Here's an example of people that come by me, and they want their picture taken. This guy was from India, and I don't know him from Adam, you know. But that sign behind me, that sign there, there it is. I used to be able to put it behind me because I didn't want anybody coming at me with a knife from the back. And that's really why I did it. But they don't allow me to put it there anymore because it's on, on the back side of it, it's got keep left. So when there's hundreds of people coming through, they want them to keep left. Because in England, we drive on the right side of the road, you know? <laughs> okay, so we drive on the left, so it's a keep left. When you get off the train, man, keep left, you know? So they don't let me do that. What I do now is I use my suitcase, I put it right behind me. And that's my guitar case. I have to leave that out because that's the status quo. Uh, street musicians who sign up for London Transport are ID'd and they've passed an American Idol type of audition. If you don't pass it, you don't get the permission. You've got to get police clearance, have ID, two, uh, two ID cards. Oh, you've got to sign in, sign out. You can go online and book two weeks ahead. Anyway, I go there Monday and Thursday for three hours each time. A lot of things are happening through that ministry. Okay. That's my daughter, Hannah. She's teaching these guys, these younger guys. She and Mark, Mark and Hannah, they get these guys going to little things together, little outings and fellowship, and they go and eat, and they go swimming together. It's bringing the youth together. Now they're young adults which is great because see them grow up from like, you know, little guys. The guy I told you who preached last uh, two weeks ago, he was, when he was this big, he, I used to fly him like Super Ted, you know, he's just a little man, 30 years old, time flies, man. But the thing is that, you know, we've all got to be active in this church business, all of us. There's no retirement. And once you get in and you're in the kingdom, you got to do something. You got to do something, really. But you can't just do it, Amy. You've got to pray for it. So if you pray for it first, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. 
Here's the Pakistani man. He's 21. Big rascal, four or five months ago. I don't know what happened, but he comes to church every Sunday. I think he thinks I'm cool because I used to do what he was doing. He's taking a bit of drugs and drinking a little bit. And many years ago, that was me, you know. So he heard the stories and he started to come to church. He said, Al, you're cool, man. He says, you know, you know where I'm at, man. I said, yeah, but you don't want to stay where you're at, you know. You need to come with your mom. So he comes every Sunday. I think he'll be baptized on the, tw on the 25th of August. That's the Sunday we have our camp. We got it Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And on the Sunday, we all meet and go to the swimming pool to swim at free time. And that's where we baptize people. So there'll be more. I think these two have talked about it for two years. I was teaching these guys, but Hannah's taking that on now. So very quickly, that's the guy's wife who we got asylum for. That's her son. He was a babe in arms when her brother and her father tried to rip him out of her clasp to get her to come home to marry somebody that they had arranged. Because if you don't marry by arranged marriage, you dishonor the family. They even shot at her husband. But God kept them safe and they, were, they came to England. This lady here, you can only just see Gloria. They're fairly newcomers. This is her husband. You can hardly see him. He's a dark man. They're from Pakistan. They got a couple of kids who want to come to church every Sunday. They tell mom and dad, we want to go to Brother Allen's church. I'm thinking, oh boy, they got stuff to learn. But then it's not my church. It's the Lord's church. People like to say it's his church or her church. It's okay. But you have to teach people so they can teach other people. Qualified preacher from the Philippines. Only been in England about four or five months. Just got a job in a grocery store, moving stuff around, qualified man. But you know, he's uh, trying to get his English more fluid so he can be involved. He's ready to do. He's done one lesson as his wife. She waited two years for him to come. So we got these Pakistani guys here, Wilson, Javed, cancer survivor, and Rashid. He's a, he's a cab driver, drives all night. And there's another two. The last Bible study we did at Noreen's house, the Pakistani people, the guy's name is Kashik, Kashif, and his wife. And boy, at the study, she, she was tracking me all the way. It's always, I don't know how come the women get it quick when their hearts are open, you know, they, they really get it. And I thought, oh, this is going to be next, you know. It's my son, Isaac, uh, Jacob, Audrey, and their three kids, Gabe, Ashton, and Chloe. He was, well, I don't think he'd mind me telling. He was fit, and all of a sudden, over 18 months to two years, he looked like he was dying all of a sudden. I saw him on Facebook. I became emotional. It was late one Sunday night. I came home from a couple of places we'd been after church. So I called straight away. I said, you guys need to go to the doctor's office like last month. What's happening with you, Jake? He says, I think I may be pre-diabetic, Dad, but I'm fine. I can do 20 push-ups and I can run. I said, no, man, you need to go. Well, he went. He's type 1 diabetes, 41 years old. Don't know where it came from. So he looks like that again now. But if you had seen him just three months ago, it was like he was getting ready to die, you know. So we really got to keep an eye on ourselves. Okay, I'm going to make my unknown prayer request known to you. I've got a prostate biopsy coming up when I get back. They've taken the MRI and they found two little things. I'm going to have that to find out, hey, am I good to go or am I good for medication? Which one, you know? So please keep me in your prayers. But God's got a plan. He's got a plan. So Jake's my folding agent now. Audrey takes care of the finances. And he tweaks up and edits my newsletters. By the way, I've got a sign-up sheet there for email. Because it's all electronic now. To send hard copies to like three, four, five hundred people is very expensive, you know, and it's a lot of work. So if you'd like and you got email, please put your email down and we'll send it to you. Yeah. The last newsletter is one of the longer ones I've done. It tells quite a bit about England. And it also delineates exactly how we're looking at getting this $116,000 so that the, the church out west, which wants to stay anonymous, said, we'll match that, Alan. But I think they're going to do that anyway. 
because they've known us like we've known each other so long. They've known me from a baby Christian, basically, from 1983, you know. Oh, that's not a good picture, but it's, you can see how gloomy that is, okay? That's the fellowship halls that belongs to the Church of England, which has got a ginormous building right there behind us. And they closed their doors because nobody was going to church three years ago. And when they told us they were demolishing, the Lord didn't allow them the permission to demolish. Every year it's been deferred. Now we're getting closer to our amount we need. And the new administrator said, Alan, if they do demolish, would you like to have a room in the sanctuary? They like us. God's great, man, I tell you. When he's for you, who can be against you? We got to believe that, see. You got to live that way, and then it happens. It works. It's so good to see all these guys growing up, you know? I remember when you guys were little. I remember Sheldon and Naomi, you know? And I'm thinking, boy, it's amazing. It's amazing to see this. And the people that want to give us a mortgage is called Kingdom Bank. They say, we want to see people start new churches. They're evangelical. No point in getting a Bible study with them, you know, it'll just be forever. But they want to see it. So God's working with us. Anyhow, this building, we got a, a, a really nice hall here. And nobody else uses it anymore, so we can stay as long as we like. And the new administrator, the lady, she really likes us. Offered us a place inside. So that's what we got. See, we're looking for a piece within the M25. It's a beltway around London. It's Greater London. It'll still be the London Church of Christ, Matthew 16, 18. And, you know, either to build or to renovate an existing property. If we have to, we'll do that. But it'll be cheaper to knock it down and start again because we won't pay VAT, value-added tax. And there's a few other breaks. So that's what we're doing, man. We're raising funds in order to enter the market. I've got about three or four people that I check auctions that are coming up. My wife sends me emails with pictures. Let me tell you two things before I quit. I love singing a song here and share something. But my wife sent me two pictures, a Methodist building, 500,000 pounds. That's nearly three quarters of a million dollars, okay? This building, man, who wants that, you know? You just knock it down for the ground but you, so that's what we're looking for. I, my, my vision is to get out of the center there, or just off center, a little further, to somewhere where there's a station. Just get a piece of ground where there's only more English. Because in London, it's a melting pot, which is fine. Because the Africans are everywhere talking hallelujah, the blood of Jesus, and all the rest of it. But they don't know how to get into the kingdom. It's true. When they come by me at the subway, they want to ask me if I'm a Christian. I say, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great to hear Jesus in this place, you know. So I can then have little Bible studies with them. They're very short because they're always on their way somewhere. So there's a lot of things happening for us right now. And that's because we've remained faithful. And I tell you, from five people to 70 plus people, that's the Lord. He answers our prayers. He says, if you wait on the Lord, you will rise up, you know. <laughs> Wings of eagles. It's amazing. I'll share a song with you, maybe a couple, but um, I guess we'll have to turn the... I'll switch this off, yeah? Ah, you done it? Okay. So I'll leave it to you. I'll put it back on and leave it to you. people coming by me, lots of Church of England preachers, Catholics, priests with their whole cassock and stuff, and they wear the heavy duty rosary like a belt, you know, with all the beads and the cross dangling. So then when they come, I say something like, don't change the word of God, it's not going to do you good. Whatever comes to mind, I'll sing it. Oh, you foolish Galatians, so soon, why have you accepted another gospel? Most of the time I usually open with this. Open the eyes of their heart. 
Faith only, so you gotta change it around. Cause you're holy, Father holy. Open the eyes of the heart, Lord. Open the eyes of the heart. Everybody need us to see you. How we need to see you. Power and the love you have done. We sing holy, Father holy. You know the chorus. Holy, 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 holy. We need to see. And then I will just stick it in. Hallelujah. You know, it goes on. I just pull out stuff from the air, basically, and do it. And so much so that the coffee bar, there were two coffee bars, but the guy opposite me was also Pakistani, and they used to give me a coffee break. I mean, they'd give me cheap coffee. But they thought my name was Hallelujah. <laughs> That's true, Zach. You know, used to think my name was Hallelujah. But what they were doing is they were hiring Romanian and, and uh, Hungarian girls for very little money. And I think one of the girls' papers was not in order. So that place was closed down. But one guy, he's uh, one of the helpers there, he'd see me coming, he'd say, Hallelujah, double espresso. I said, Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, you know, as I was saying, there are many Islamic people there. And when they come by me, I can recognize them because I was born in India, grew up in Pakistan. I still speak the language. And with those Pakistani folks I told you about, they started to speak their language slower when I'm there so I can get it back. And I'm getting it back now. And just before I left, I was invited by a Pakistani pastor in the evangelical church to come and speak to them because he heard that I'm from Pakistan. So they tell everybody, you should come to church with us. Our pastor's a Pakistani. He speaks Urdu. I'm thinking that's cool. You can say whatever you like, man, because I'm not really a Pakistani. My father's people were from Belgium. My mother's people from Ireland. Caleb? Is that you? Yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> so, you know, I see them coming, and I'm thinking, okay, here they come. Let's sing it for them. And I had a chorus. There's no other name but Jesus. He opens your eyes to see. There's no other name but Jesus. Boy, he brings the best things to be. And then I've got to sing also for the evangelicals. i got to sing for the Pentecostals. i got to sing for the Church of England guys. So... I made it into a song because that's all I had. Anytime I see him coming, I would say, No other name but Jesus. He opens your eyes to see. Boy, they didn't want to hear that. No other name but Isa. They call him Isa. He brings the best things to be. So I put a little song together. Ask the Father, ask him in the name of his Son. In Jesus' name everything has been done. There is not another one. 
This all comes by faith Stepping into obedience Thank you, Father All that you do and have done Helping us in the race we run And helping some in your saving son Jesus, you're the truth and the light And your way is amazing And there's no other name but Jesus It opens your eyes to see There's no other name but Jesus He brings the best things to be So this is for the faith only Believing and baptized in his name as an adult You cleanse from your sin, there is no doubt That's the only time His Holy Spirit he gave And another one is born Again Another one is born Again The way you taught us in your world How to be born again It's got a lot of verses to it. I'm not going to sing them all. The time is of the essence. But I, I go out to reach people and let people know about how to get in the kingdom. And uh, the staff at the station, they really like me, you know. The police now, they walk with automatics, okay? They got their finger on the trigger, just off the trigger. They got the side guns. And all of a sudden they'll appear because they've been given a heads up that there's something going on. But they're never in a hurry. Yeah? They walk together in twos. And they look at me and go, so I'm thinking, okay. Because you know why? Um, I had a complaint from somebody. I was singing about LBGT stuff. I said, not two daddies and not two mommies. They don't make no families. Only mommies and daddies make family. And then if you want your children to grow up to be great, grow them up to be straight, you know, things like that. Somebody reported me to the head office and they suspended me right now because that text went to the head office. It went from there to the station master. And I had just finished three hours and I was packing my rig up. And the lady station master came out and said, Alan, you have to stop right now. I said, why, what's up? So we got a text and you're suspended. I thought, shoot, what happened? Then my phone dinged and there it was. And boy, that was a, a, a very like educated kind of uh, uh, text uh, that was really uh, an attack. So I just offered an apology. I, I went to the meeting, an investigative meeting, two days later. But I'm back on. The Lord took me through it. I'm back on Mondays and Thursdays. I had to be a little ambiguous as to what I said when I was there because I was singing off the top of my head, you know. And it was some, with a backing track, some blues black, a backing track that I had, and I was just singing over it. So that's another thing that, you know, we've got to be aware of. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. I picked up a paper in your house, Becky, in that paper I was reading on the table. And, you know, the techie from Star Trek, many, many years ago, he came out to be gay. He says he's 82 years old, and he plans to have another few birthdays till 104, because his mama had 104 birthdays. And he's talking about how good it is that he came out. And then there's some other people in there. They're putting it in these, in these local little flyers and magazines and stuff. And the kids can pick it up and read it. In Isaac's school, they put a toilet there. Girls stroke boys or women stroke men, you know. And he said they put it there for the transgenders. I'm thinking, what? Guys going to school at that age? We have the Tavistock Hospital in London and some young parents who don't stand for anything, who are in their late 20s, got kids four, five, six years old, who are playing with boys' toys and they're girls. And the Tavistock Hospital says, you know, fluid gender, bring your children here, we'll help and counsel them. I found an article in the paper, the most traumatic young children are those people that are involved in sex changes. And, tra and transgender and uh, um, fluid fluid gender, you know, it's it's really crazy what's happening. So keep us in your prayers there, because there are a lot of people come into church, and one of these days, because we're registered, they can ask me 
to marry him, but I'll say, listen, come to church for a bit and see what we teach. If you like what we teach, you can stay. If you don't like what we're teaching, because I mean Romans chapter 1, they don't like that, and all the other Old Testament passages. So yeah, it's, it's a different place to hear. Driving here tonight with you, following you, Jim, it's like a little bit of heaven. Coming through Ohio, it was the same, going to the church. I'll tell you again, this is only in America. Jeff, it's only here, man. You will not get a piece of ground like this. You would not afford it in London. The little church I went to, Bell Church of Christ up in, I think it's in Utica, near Utica, Ohio. Beautiful place. People would only come there to look at the building. It's intact, it's about 100 years old. You know, beautiful. So what you've got is amazing. God has given it to you, Brother John. He's given it to you. And he's waiting on us to really get in there and do it. See young men like this in church? Beautiful. Good to see you guys in here. I tell you, you're, you're the next generation, man. That picture of my daughter Hannah, she's 24, with them young guys, 14, 15, 16. She captioned it and said, next generation. They're right. They're the guys. You know, it's, a, it's a relay race. You got to pass the baton on. Yeah. So as I put in my newsletter, I've got all those men ready to do it, and they're doing it. So if the Lord says to me, okay, your time's up, dude, you come home now, the church will go on. And that's how it should be. You know. Great to see you here, Brother Justin. I remember when you came. And it's really great, you know, with your family and what you all are doing. Jeff and Mark and all of you guys, I don't know everybody's name here, you know. Caleb, all of you, you're in, involved in something, right? That's how it's going to grow, man. That's how it's going to happen. So thank you for being a blessing to us. Many years for being encouraging to us, taking care of us. Often, you know, hopefully we will do what we need to to get our own place. I remember when this place had dust on the ground, there was no carpet and all the rest of it, man. Like, how about that, uh, you know? So we, one day we won't have to make, make church. Everything we got is in the van and we, we go and we make church happen. We sweep the floor first. That's the first thing we do. We got no more heating now. They're not going to repair it. So we got like about 12 electric heaters and it trips the switch, man. So we put so many on, you know, and then when we switch the PA and everything and the amps on, boop, it's gone again. So, okay, guys, take the heaters out. Only use four. <laughs> You got to get there at least an hour before in the winter so the place is warm when people come in. One glad morning when the life is over, I planning to fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. Yes, I fly away. I obey, oh glory, I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, bye, bye, yes, I. Everybody's going to get an issue.
one time. Come in. And then you gotta go to the doctor, you gotta take the medication. And then you think, what's going on? Oh Lord, what's going on? But as we were saying earlier, you gotta roll with the punches. And don't be singing, swing low, sweet child. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Oh Lord, coming for to carry me home. I turned on the television to watch the evening news. What I saw made me want to crawl right into the tube. They were talking about a wedding, but they only showed two men. So I fired off a little email with an invite just for them. Come on down to the farm, come on out to the barn. You won't find two roosters walking on and on. They couldn't make no chicken, cause they had no egg to hatch. When God said to love your brother, I don't think he meant it like that. Now in that little email, I proceeded to tell him how two mares can't make a stallion, two bulls can't make a cow. Why we need a male and a female for the species to go on? There'll be no reproduction when the plumbing is on. The other thing I sing, no more surrogate. Oh, it's gonna keep you away from heaven's gate. Better get your head and your heart straight. Cause Jesus is the only way. Amazing grace, how sweet. Last song for the night. Thank you for letting me come. Send your prayers, man. We need that church building. We really need it. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know it's going to happen because of God. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I'll see. It was great. That brought my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour that I first believed my chains are gone I've been God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. Well, we always look forward to that time, you know. But in the meantime, there's stuff to do. When we in the ten thousand years, I shine bigger the sun. We've no less day to sing God's praise.
Our Father and God, thank you for letting us meet together tonight. We know that when we belong to you, nothing is by coincidence, but that all things do work together for good to those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Help us to remain spiritual people because we can see. And you told us that the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Thank you for the freedom that we enjoy. And Lord Jesus, you told us then, as we go, we should make disciples and baptize them and continue to teach them. May your church continue to be victorious in this manner. May our young children grow up to love you, Lord Jesus, to know who you are. And Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit God, hear our prayers. And may we have the victory to bring honor to you to lift up Jesus, that the church may continue, Lord Jesus, until you come. Father, we pray and give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Thank you for letting me come tonight.